Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be discussing a very unusual instrument that I recently found on eBay. So I like to search eBay for different clarinets just to see what's out there. Occasionally I'll buy a few if they're interesting. And while I was searching the other day, I happened to find this very unusual instrument that you don't really see too often on eBay. So this is a buffet basset horn. But what's interesting about this is it's, it is still the RC Prestige model, but it's actually one of the older models that, unlike today's model, it has a small bore, which means that it uses a regular clarinet mouthpiece as opposed to the newer instrument, which uses an alto clarinet mouthpiece. So just looking at this listing, everything looks pretty good. It's advertised as being in a new condition. Obviously it's pretty old. I'm guessing it's somewhere from the 90s or something. Um, but still, it looks in great shape. I don't see anything obviously wrong with it. So let's go look at the pictures. So one of the first things I noticed about this instrument is the uh, mouthpiece. Um, the first thing that caught my eye is that the uh, cork is wrapped in Teflon. Now this is pretty common with buffet basset horns. The uh, socket for the mouthpiece is actually a bit bigger than what you find on a standard clarinet. So a lot of standard B-flat mouthpieces don't fit. So what this person did was they wrapped the cork in Teflon tape to make it fit. So that's pretty normal for buffet basset horns. I don't think Selmers have that same problem. But looking closely at the mouthpiece, you can see that it's actually a prototype made specifically for this instrument. Now that's pretty cool. Um, on my basset horn, which is also a small bore, although it's a much older one, I just use a standard B-flat mouthpiece, although the one I use, I had to search for a while to find one that works well. But um, this person actually spent the expense to have a custom mouthpiece made for this instrument. So that's a pretty good sign. Whoever owned this obviously cared for it and wanted to get the best sound out of it. So that's pretty good to see. Other than that, everything looks great on this instrument. The silver plating appears to be in good shape. I don't see any obvious signs of abuse or wear. Everything about this instrument looks like it would be a very good player and that it would be a very good instrument to own. So now that we um, looked at the pictures, let's look at the description to see if we can learn more about this instrument. So now let's look at the description of this instrument. So Basset Horn and F by Fay Crampon, a prestige model made around 2000. That's what we expect. It's a slightly older model. Uh, mint condition, I agree, it looks pretty good. Um, this horn needs to be played with a special mouthpiece. That explains the uh, custom mouthpiece. Uh, it's not a regular clarinet mouthpiece, although it really looks like one. Uh, lots of people try to play this with a uh, regular mouthpiece, but it hasn't worked well. And that kind of raises a red flag. Um, even though these basset horns tend not to play perfectly with a just a standard B-flat mouthpiece, they tend to work okay. And the fact that it says that a lot of people are disappointed in trying to play it with a regular mouthpiece uh, it starts to make me suspicious. Um, maybe something else is wrong with this instrument. And uh, when I was reading through this description the first time, I remembered a article that I happened to read a while back that talks about these specific types of basset horns. So the article I was thinking of is an article by Stephen Fox titled The Strange Case of Basset Horn XXXXX. Now I'm not going to read through the whole article, of course, that'd be pretty boring. But just to give a summary of it, he's talking about this uh, Buffet RC Prestige Basset Horn, just like we saw on eBay, that had a really serious flaw in it. So the bore in these Basset Horns is supposed to be between maybe 15.5 millimeters and 16 millimeters. But he was talking about how the bore at the very bottom of the lower joint, right where the Basset notes are, was much, much larger, almost the same size as an alto clarinet bore. So the bore kind of jumped up in size for these last few notes. And the problem this created is, one, it made the notes very stuffy and hard to play, and two, it pretty much destroyed the intonation of the lowest notes of the instrument. So what he had to do was he had to uh, essentially remount the bore and put an insert in there to bring the bore down to size, and then he had to relocate the tone holes. Now, this is a pretty serious modification, and if you're going to spend $6,000 on this basset horn, if it has the same problem, you're going to be spending another few thousand just to get this fixed. So 
This Basset Horn at first may have looked like a good deal, but we need to know if it has this serious flaw because this would be a big problem. So in order to get to the bottom of this mystery, I decided to email the seller to try and learn more about this instrument. Now the image you see here is from another Basset Horn that I took a picture of. You can see the uh, lower end of the lowest tenon, which clearly shows the uh, bore in relation to the rest of the body of the instrument. And here you can see the picture that the seller sent to me. Now, comparing the two pictures, it's pretty obvious that the bore at this point on the instrument is much larger for the RC Prestige than for the older basset horn, even though they're both small bore instruments and should both have the same bore size throughout the entire instrument. This definitely suggests that it has the same fatal flaw that Stephen Fox found in two other instruments of this era. So uh, just to get to the bottom of this even further, I emailed the seller again asking how the intonation of the instrument was and he admitted to me that even though with this custom mouthpiece that he had made for the instrument it does play better, it still has some pretty significant intonation problems in the lower register. Everything else above low E he told me is fine, which I believe it makes sense because that's not where the problem is, but this fatal flaw definitely presents a problem for this already very expensive instrument. You're going to have to pay somebody to completely redo this section of the bore and relocate tone holes and build key work and that's going to be very expensive and even after all that's done there's still no guarantee that the instrument's going to play well. So from the evidence we've gathered it looks like this basset horn has a pretty serious flaw. Even though it looks great in the pictures there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with it. Um, from looking at the size of the bore and from asking the seller a few questions, we learned that this seemingly good-looking basset horn actually has a pretty serious problem. I mean, this is something that essentially the bottom end of the lower joint has to be completely rebuilt. I mean, a new bore, new tone hole locations, and the keywork has to be modified. This is going to be thousands of dollars of work just to make this instrument play like it should have come from the factory. Now, I don't really blame the seller. What I think happened here is that he bought this instrument so many years ago and just discovered this flaw and tried to correct it by buying a custom mouthpiece which I'm sure helped a lot but the real problem here is with buffet quality control now we all know that after this buffet switched the um, sort of medium large board basset horn which has a alto clarinet mouthpiece I've never played one but from what I understand they're pretty good instruments but it looks like in this transitional period where they were switching over from small bore to large bore, there were some pretty serious design flaws that they somehow let get out of the factory. And that's pretty crazy to think that such a large company with such a good reputation would let that happen. Um, I feel sad for the seller because what happens when they sell this instrument and somebody finds out that it's basically unplayable, they're going to go after him. It's, it's a pretty unfortunate situation all around especially also to the person who bought it thinking they were getting a good instrument. So I guess it shows that you just have to be careful on eBay. You never know when something like this is going to happen. You can look at the pictures, you can read the description, it may sound good, but you got to do your homework, you got to ask your questions, and you got to learn more about the model that you're buying to see if there are any inherent design flaws with that particular model. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope this video teaches you something about buying instruments on eBay. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments or if you have any questions. Okay, thanks. Bye.